Hi guys, so I'm filming with my brand new camera. Can you tell a difference in the quality? And also I don't have to be like holding my phone. I'm super excited, I got a Sony camera just a couple days ago, just in time for my trip to Australia. I'm gonna be traveling to Australia in, I'm leaving in like nine days for LA, and then I'm flying from LA to Sydney, which is gonna be about a 15 hour flight, and then flying from Sydney to Perth after I'm in Sydney for about a week, so it's gonna be quite the trip. So today, though, it's actually the Ohio State-Michigan game, aka a national holiday, well, maybe just an Ohio holiday. I went to Ohio State, I graduated there in 2013 with a degree in finance from The Ohio State University. Um, fun fact for you guys. I'm gonna be going to the gym today and I want to make a video on blood flow restriction because this is something that I get a lot of questions about. So it's also called occlusion training. It's also called BFR for short. So I'm not going to explain the science behind BFR because I will do a terrible job. Um, I am not a researcher in this topic. I don't I haven't gone to school and researched it or studied it, so I'm gonna put links below to some of my favorite or some easy to read articles about blood flow restriction and sort of the science behind it. One of my friends, Jeremy Lenicky, he actually has done quite a bit of research on blood flow restriction and there have been some pretty incredible findings. So sort of in layman's terms, I guess you could say, the reason I use BFR is because it is an effective way to reach muscle hypertrophy or achieve muscle hypertrophy with a small percentage of your one rep max. So typically what I do is I use about 20% of my one rep max for a specific body part. So either shoulders, biceps, if I'm doing BFR squats, you can really do anything for BFR. Now, if you do BFR for your back, it's more of an indirect BFR. You're not actually occluding your back. So if you occlude in your ar on your arms and you do back BFR, it's not gonna be a direct BFR as biceps would be because you're occluding the blood um, or you're you know, pulling the blood in your bicep directly. Or let's say quads or something of that, you know, something lower extremity. Um, but you still can do it for back. Um, it's just the research hasn't been, it's more of like an indirect effect um, for your back. But anyways, so the reason I like it, I have been adding in BFR for about two years. And the reason that I really enjoy it is because you can add in volume, you can use a low percentage of your one rep max, about 20%, and still get the hypertrophy benefits without achieving a lot of muscle damage. Your goal in training should not be to achieve the most muscle damage that you can. Hypertrophy is not directly correlated or muscle growth is not directly correlated with muscle damage. So you want to, it's a balancing act. You know, of course, using failure techniques are important at certain times, um, but it's really, as you can see by my explanation, it's a bit more complicated than just, oh, I'm sore, oh, that means I'm I'm growing muscle. Well, if you went out and ran a marathon, this is actually, I remember my my coach um, Lane, so I used to be coached by Lane Norton, and I remember when I first started training with him, I said, I'm not really sore, like, because we were, my volume had been reduced, and he said, all right, Katie, go out and run a marathon. Will you be sore? Yes, you probably won't be able to walk tomorrow. Is that an indication of muscle growth? No, you didn't grow any muscle by going and running out, running a marathon. Um, so muscle soreness is not always an indication of muscle growth. Like BFR a lot, is you do not get a lot of muscle damage, but you do get the hypertrophy benefits. So I like to use about 20% of my one rep max, do one set of 30, followed by three sets of 15. This is just standard with about 30 seconds rest in between each set and keep keep wrapped in between the sets so you don't unwrap in between sets. Um, the tightness is going to be, this is very vague, but about 70% tightness. It shouldn't be something where after the first set of 30, you feel like your arms are gonna fall off or your legs are gonna fall off. Complete that set of 30 and then follow it with three sets of 15 without unwrapping. So the two places that you're gonna be wrapping, I'm gonna show you guys. So for anything upper body, you're gonna be wrapping on your shoulders. So right below, right above the bicep, right below the shoulder. 
and that's going to be for triceps, for biceps, for shoulders. You can see Stanley's cage in the background. So for lower body, I'm going to be wrapping right above the quad and below the glute, so right around here. And that's going to be for, for quad, for hamstring, for calf, for anything like that. So I'm going to be heading to the gym. I'm going to give you guys a demonstration on, on BFR and film maybe a set of legs and then a set of upper body so you guys can see. This is a question I get pretty frequently. So hopefully this is helpful and I will see you guys at the gym. All right. So here is a clip of me at the gym just showing you guys how to wrap your legs. Um, sped it up a little bit here just not to bore you. I was actually watching the Ohio State game the very end of it um, in the gym and like yelling at the screen because it was a double overtime. So you'll see where it's wrapped. I just wanted to film this as a demonstration of where to wrap. I like to do BFR squats. I do BFR hip thrusts. I do BFR leg curls, leg extensions, calf raises, um, hyperextensions, all sorts of stuff. So a lot of good things you can do for, for your lower body and then also for upper body. So something I forgot to mention for lower body, you want to use knee wraps. For upper body, you want to use quick release tourniquets and these can be ordered on off of the Amazon. I believe the knee wraps are about $25. I'll link those below in the description. Um, the ones that I bought and then I will also re uh, link these quick release tourniquets so you'll do like I do for everything one set of 30 rest 30 seconds and then followed by three sets of 15 with 30 seconds rest in between each set and you don't unwrap in between um, so that is the basic protocol for blood flow restriction how I like to use it I do use it for upper body and lower body and it's something that I do incorporate pretty frequently so I hope this is helpful for a lot of the questions that I frequently get, and I will talk to you guys soon.